Right. So I'm Chris Gibson. I'm the uh, leader for the um, uh, Butterflies and Moths, the Spanish Pyrenees. I have been for the past eight years or so. Uh, I'm speaking to you from Wivenhoe on the flatlands of the Essex coast, probably further from the weather, the wildlife and the wild landscape of the Pyrenees you could not possibly imagine. I've, as I say, been leading wildlife tours there for about uh, eight years, and uh, it's a place I love and um, will always remember because it's somewhere I've been visiting for the past 30 years. So where are the Pyrenees? The Pyrenees are the narrow neck between, they occupy the narrow neck between the Atlantic and the Mediterranean on the border of France and Spain. So the Pyrenees are, have a lot of interesting features. They're a border, a, a political border, a people border. They're a barrier to movement of wildlife amongst many other things. And therefore, some of the uh, insects and other wildlife you get on one side of the mountains are very different to those on the other side of the mountains. It's also a place of gradients, a gradient from the relatively mild, wet um, Western Atlantic Pyrenees through to the, the hot, dry, at least in summer, um, Mediterranean Pyrenees, you get a gradient from north to south, you get gradients going up the mountain uh, altitudes. And so all these different gradients lead to lots of different conditions, which means lots of different wildlife. And butterflies are no exception. It's also, in effect, an island, an island of high ground, isolated from the uh, other Sierras of northern Spain, but also the Alps and the Cévennes by lowlands. And what goes on in the Pyrenees is a little bit of excitement uh, in terms of genetic uh, differentiation, like uh, is always the case within an island. So zooming in a little bit, we come to the area we stay. We stay in a place called Berdun, which as you can see from the picture there is very close to the High Pyrenees. Looking in the other direction, you see towards the pre-Pyrenees. From the high Pyrenees in one direction, uh, down to the and down to the pre-Pyrenees in the other direction is maybe at most an hour's drive in the minibus from our centre in Berdun. In Berdun is the place we stay, Casa Sarasa. Now that is a place for me which is, well, it's a place, it's a palace almost of memories. It's uh, memories of great food, uh, wonderful weather, fantastic wildlife. And wildlife, in many cases, on the literal doorstep. That's the garden of Casa Sarasa. When we're there uh, with our Butterfly and Moth Week in uh, end of June, early July, we see typically between 110 and 120 species of butterfly. In the garden alone, we can see 40. So it's a great place to start exploring the butterflies of the region, including the great banded grayling, the swallowtail, and not the scarce swallowtail, but the Spanish swallowtail. This is one of those that's been isolated by the Pyrenees and formed its own similar but different species to the scarce swallowtail. <clears throat> Just a short stroll away down to the rivers Aragon and Veral. Uh, there's scrublands, there's wetlands, there's drylands, there's meadows, there's hedgerows, and uh, again are full of butterflies from the blue spot hair streak and the Spanish gatekeeper to the perhaps more familiar uh, marbled whites. It would be actually possible to spend a whole week there based at uh, Casa Sarasa without ever getting into a minibus and have to have a wonderful week. But the allure of the mountains in both directions is very, very strong. Of course, rising up to the higher altitudes, 
up to maybe 1800 meters, you'll see all sorts of different creatures, lots of um, grizzle skippers of various sorts, blues of various sorts, in this case, a uh, large blue, and fritillaries of various sorts, as our other speakers this evening have, have mentioned, in the other mountains of Europe. And when the conditions are right, the numbers are simply stunning, especially around the drying puddles, where the, uh, particularly the males are visiting to uh, ripen their, uh, uh, their reproductive organs in order that they can bring on the next generation. Uh, in that particular picture, there may be 60 individuals, but that constitutes nine or 10 different species of butterfly. And such sites are not uncommon. Of course, some butterflies are, uh, all butterflies are special, but some are more special than others. And Luca again has mentioned this one, the Apollo. Well, we do see Apollos there. Not always the adults, we sometimes see just the caterpillars, but of course, on a butterfly and moth holiday, uh, caterpillars are fair game, just as the adults are. Those are the specialities, the big game of the high tops, but lower down in the more Mediterranean hot regions, the big game there are the two-tailed pashas. Two-tailed pashas, again, we can see them as caterpillars with these wonderfully fierce looking dragon heads on the strawberry trees, or we can see the adults here rather unsavourily uh, drinking from a local dog poo. This of course is built as a butterfly and moth tour. And so we must think about the moths. And up here in the Pyrenees during the day, all sorts of day flyers, uh, very familiar ones like the hummingbird hawk moth, but all sorts of others. There are day flying moths everywhere. And for me, the epitome of those are the burnet moths. The epitome of a diverse grassland on a sunny summer's day are burnets and foresters. And that is just a, um, a pin-up shot of just a few, well, probably most, but uh, certainly not all, the species we regularly see during our trips in the Spanish Pyrenees. Of course, in reality, it's not just butterflies and moths, it's insects of all sorts. Here we have beetles from the oil beetle and the bee chafer through to uh, the eyed uh, ladybird and various bugs too. And not just beetles and bugs, it's cicadas, it's mantises, it's wasps and uh, owl flies and flies themselves. What could be cooler than the uh, radiant eyes of that horsefly that will bite you, but you'll certainly get a good view of its eyes while you're doing it. And not just insects, uh, birds everywhere, birds breeding around the area include bee eaters and vast numbers of um, griffin vultures in particular, but also many, many other raptors. As far as the plants are concerned, this time of year is not the very best for the diversity of plants but some of them are very special. The endemic to the Pyrenees, the Pyrenean lily. And then on just one of the tours I led there, uh, this was the absolute highlight for me. This is something I have wandered through the beech woods of Europe for, for decades looking for, and once there in the Pyrenees with a group from Nature Trek, I found it, the ghost orchid an almost mythical creature, which uh, I found when I was walking through a dense, dark, uh, in fact, forestry plantation and beech wood. It was a dark day, but the sun came out and a shaft of light broke through the canopy and pinpointed this individual just five metres from the path. One of the most exciting sights I have ever seen. It's a place of weather, and 
what we also are very fortunate to have at Casa Sarasa is a moth trap. And when the Knights allow us to run the moth trap, we not only have a trap, we also have license to run it. In Spain, you need a license to run a moth trap and the owners of Casa Sarasa have that license. So on the nights when it's safe to run the trap, not one like this, on the nights it's safe to run the trap, we do. And we find all sorts of moths. Now, admittedly, during that particular week at the end of June, an awful lot of them are pine processionary moths. Too many of them, perhaps, are pine processionary moths. But there is a whole host of other wonders to see as well. Familiar bright things to us in the UK, like the small elephant hawk moth. Things we don't see in the UK, like the oak hawk moth or rare migrants to the UK, like the geometrician and the passenger, or species we're never likely to see in the, <clears throat> the UK. This you know, on, on the bottom right is the Iberian or Spanish uh, pine hawk moth. This is another one of those species which is separated from the rest of its kin by the Pyrenees and evolution has done its thing and created a new species. As with that one at the very bottom, which is the um, Spanish character, as a segregated effect of the Chinese character we find across most of the rest of Europe. So whenever we can, we run the moth trap. Now, everything I've shown you so far is from mid, uh, the Midsummer Tours. There are uh, plenty of other nature trek tours to the Pyrenees as well, and some of them go also to Casa Sarasa. So if you wanted to go on an earlier season tour in uh, April, May time, you'll find a whole different suite of wildlife. You'll find a lot more in the way of flowers from the daffodils, and the orchids through to the gentians. And then the butterflies, a different suite of butterflies from Moroccan orange tips and Spanish festoons uh, and the Spanish fritillary going right through to the um, Panoptes blues. These are the early species butterflies which you will find in an earlier season tour. You won't, certainly won't find so many species, you won't get such a long list, but there are some serious specialities. And at that time, of course, the moth uh, selection is even more impressive, not least because it's not diluted by the hordes of buying processionary moths. Uh, again, a whole mix diverse moths. Again, one cannot guarantee that you get good moth trapping nights at that earlier part of the season. There's some, sometimes whole weeks go by without being able to run the trap, but that's life, isn't it? But in the early season, there are some moths to go for. And one of those is that. Now, anyone who runs a moth trap in Britain will probably know the emperor moth. And we think the emperor moth is big. That one, which looks pretty much like an emperor moth, is not an emperor moth. It's double the size. That's the size of my hand. I've got a normal sized hand and it is a giant peacock moth. Not only do you get one or two of those in uh, around Casa Sarasa in the right time of year, so late April, early May, you get multiples of them, sometimes five, six, ten of them in the moth trap at a time. Absolutely giants, absolutely impressive. And if you're lucky, the creme de la creme of the Pyrenees in spring is the Spanish moon moth. When we go in the summer, we don't see the moon moths, but we see their caterpillars. But to see the Spanish moon moth in its where it wants to be in the Pyrenees, coming out of the moth trap of Casa Sarasa is probably one of the, another one of the most exciting sights I've ha ever had in life. It's a question of, it's, a, it's art imitating life. It is the Art Nouveau moth. And the handful I've seen there in the Pyrenees are again, some of the most important wildlife memories to myself, and you too can uh, also enjoy those with tours 
to uh, Casa Sarasa with Nature Trek in the coming years. I hope you do and I hope you enjoy them. Thank you very much.